75 years ago, this would have been a common sight in American backyards, the garden swing. And in those quieter days before television, four people could sit out here swinging gently and while away a summer evening. Now this, of course, is an antique, but it incorporates some nice features. It swings easily and still quietly. And the contour and shape of the seat is actually very comfortable. But if there's anything wrong with this swing, it's the choice of materials. It was built with pine. And since it has to sit outdoors all the time, it has to be painted. And as you can see, the paint just won't stick to it, just flaking off. Now also, pine is not very resistant to rot. So the bottom of the uprights and a lot of the joints have just disintegrated. Well, there's a lot of good features in this swing, but I don't think it's safe at any speed anymore, and it's time to build a replacement. But I think I'll choose a different wood, maybe redwood. Be sure to read, understand, and follow all the safety rules that come with your power tools. Knowing how to use your power tools properly will greatly reduce the risk of personal injury. And remember this, there is no more important safety rule than to wear these safety glasses. Here are the four two by fours for the main frames. Now the bottom of these two by fours are actually gonna come in contact with the ground. And so that I get a maximum amount of bearing surface, I'm gonna have to make a compound cut. It'll be angled this way and this way. Now the radial arm is a good choice to make that cut. I first tilted the blade 12 degrees from vertical. And now I'm gonna just swing the arm so that it's 13 and a half degrees from zero. Now with this setup, I'll be able to cut the bottoms of all my supports. And I'll also make a similar cut at the top for looks more than anything else. Here's a couple pieces of one by stock, which are for the bottom cross pieces of the trapezoid. And the ends get cut at 12 degrees. Now the length of these pieces is 83 inches from long point to long point. I'll just adjust my angle to 12 degrees on the other side of zero. Now the top piece of each frame is made from a two by four, and the angle is the same, 12 degrees. Now this time the measurement is gonna be taken from the short point, and that dimension is gonna be 45 inches. I'll just hold my tape there, put a little mark on the edge, and draw a line indicating the direction of the angle. On the antique swing set, the cross pieces were just mounted on the surface, bolted together. But I think it's much stronger if we let them in. Now the radial arm saw equipped with a stacked dado head cutter is the perfect tool for removing this material. That's because I can see the cut. Now I've turned the angle of the arm to 12 degrees and that corresponds with the angle at the bottom of the standard. Now that takes care of the left hand members of the frame. Now for the right hand standards, I'm gonna have to move the radial arm to 12 degrees on the other side of zero.
Well, that takes care of the dados at the bottom of the standards. Now, at the top, it's a little bit different. I want the two by four cross pieces to sit in a notch. Now, the angle is still 12 degrees, but obviously, I'm going to have to deepen the cut. The next pieces to make are these little angle braces. Now, it's a pretty sharp cut up at the top edge. In fact, it's greater than 45 degrees, but that's not a problem with the radial arm. Okay, I'm going to need four of those. Well, now I'm ready to cut the pieces for these cross braces. And they're a little tricky. Down here at this end, this angle is 36 and a half degrees. Then I want to measure from this long point along that edge up to here, which is 49 and 7 16 inches, and then cut this end at 8 degrees. Construction adhesive will help hold the joints together, and nails will hold everything in place while I drill holes for the bolts, which is the next step. Okay, now we got these braces. Down here, I'm just going to use a clamp to hold it together while I drill the holes. Now to permanently fasten the top of the brace, I'm just going to use some two and a half inch screws. Wherever possible, I'm going to counterbore for the washer and the nut. Okay, with the cross braces held in place with some clamps, I've just drilled the holes for my bolts. The location of the braces is important. The top edge of the brace should be an inch and three-eighths from the top of my two by four, and the bottom edge down here should be 24 inches. Well, you'll notice that I'm not using any construction adhesive on these joints. You can't do that, otherwise I wouldn't be able to get it out of the shop later on. Okay, that bolt will secure the center of the cross brace. And now I want to drill two more holes right up through these two by fours. Now I'm driving a 3 8 inch diameter eye bolt with a washer on it up through that hole. And this is a standard hardware item, as is all the hardware I'm using on the project. Well, next, I want to start working on these vertical members from which the seats hang. And they're going to take a lot of stress and strain. So I want to make sure they're properly reinforced. Now, the first thing I want to do is bore a hole down from the top for this eye bolt. It has to be perfectly centered and straight. So I've set up my five-in-one tool in a horizontal boring mode. I've clamped a straight edge to the table to position it side to side, and I've set the height so that it's centered. Now I'll just bore a hole about six inches deep. Now, 
Now, in order to get the washer and the nut on the eye bolt, I had to drill a larger hole that, of course, intersects the smaller hole. I also didn't go all the way through because every bit of wood I can save now will make the piece stronger. Now, in order for the washer to sit on a flat surface, I'm just squaring up the top edge of the hole. Now, to reinforce the top of these members so they won't split right down the middle, I went out and bought some eighth inch thick by one and a half inch flat aluminum stock. And then I formed them into these U brackets, which will slip over the top of each member. Now, to make the bends, all I've done is clamp the piece of material in the vise at the right location for the first bend. Now, I'll just bend it over with my hands, and then use a block of hardwood to sharpen up the corner. Well, now, I'm going to turn it around place it in the other way, and if my measurements are right, it should fit the top of that two by perfectly. Let's see how this fits. Well, the sides are just about right, but in order to make the top fit snugly, I'm going to have to knock off the corners of the wood. I'll just do that with my block plane. Now, if I measured carefully, these holes I'm drilling through the top of the metal brackets will align with the holes I drilled through the top of the wood piece. Okay, let's see how it all fits together. Bracket on there. Put the eye bolt in with a washer. It's going to be a little snug, so I'm going to use a mallet to... Okay. Just as it comes through the hole, I'm going to slip on a washer. And now put a nut on. That's a little tricky. I like to just hold the nut and then take a screwdriver and spin the bolt to get it started. Okay, and now another screwdriver to keep that nut from spinning around. Now, when I get to the end, I don't want to tighten this down too much, because if I do, I'll start to close up the eye bolt. Just bring it so it's snug, like that. Now, to hold this sandwich of wood and metal together, I'm going to use some threaded rod and put a washer and a nut on each end. So I need to drill some holes all the way through. And so that I don't hit the eye bolt, I'm going to drill the top hole on this side of center, and the lower hole on the opposite side of center. And I just slip the rod through, put a washer on it, and a nut. Now, those two rods and that metal bracket is going to add significant strength to the top of these members. And that's just about as far as I wanted to get today. So we'll come back tomorrow and finish it up. Started today, I want to make a dado in the upright for this armrest support. And I also want to remove some material down here for the brace. The dado for the armrest support is at 10 degrees to the vertical. The angle for the notch for the lower brace is 38 degrees. The front end of the armrest support is cut at 10 degrees. The other end is cut at 5 degrees. The next piece to make is this angle piece, and it's pretty complicated, several cuts. The first cut here is 38 degrees, which corresponds to the notch that I made. The bottom cut is 90 degrees to that first cut. 
Now up at the other end, we want to make a cut that's 41 and a half degrees from this side, and the back is not 90 degrees to the first cut. It's slightly angled back at five degrees. Well, now I'm ready to start working on the seat support piece and the back support piece. I've actually made a couple patterns or templates. These were traced from the antique original. It has the nice contour along the back, and then the bottom is cut off at five degrees. Now, the seat support piece was also traced from the antique original. It's nicely shaped here, and its back edge is cut at five degrees. Okay, now let's assemble all the parts. First, the armrest support. A little bit of construction adhesive. Let's put it in place. I'm gonna tack everything together with nails. I'll bolt it up later. Okay, now I'm just gonna flip the assembly over. And the next piece is the seat support. And there's a couple layout lines that are important. The first one is right here at the front of the seat support. It's 10 degrees off the bottom. And what that does is positions it front to back. There's also a line on the hanger piece, which is also at 10 degrees, and it's 14 and a half inches from the bottom up to the line. It's the bolts, of course, that really hold it together. Let's take a look underneath our prototype and see how the platform mechanism works. Now, the platform hangs from a piece of conduit that goes through these eye bolts, and then it's let into the vertical members with a hole. Now, of course, that hole doesn't go all the way through. It's only 7 eighths of an inch deep, and I want to drill those next. You'll notice that I installed a piece of tape on my drill bit. That way I'll know exactly where the depth should be. Okay. What I've just done is drilled a hole in this metal bracket that I'm going to put on each end of the 2x4s, which are the support system for the platform. And what they started out as are these standard hardware items, half post caps. I just cut off the unnecessary part with my jigsaw and a metal cutting blade. Okay, now all I have to do is drill a nice straight hole through the end, like I did before, as a pilot for the eye screw. After the first two slats have been nailed on either end of the platform members, it's a good idea to check it for square. And I do that just by taking diagonal measurements. I know that when they're equal, it's perfectly square. And that's good. So now I can put down a little more construction adhesive along the top of the frame member. I'll install the rest of the slats. I'll nail them in place with some six-penny galvanized finish nails. The last slat on each end of the platform sits over the metal bracket. I'm still going to use a little construction adhesive, but I'm going to have to pre-drill some holes through the bracket for the nails. I also held this back about a quarter of an inch so that it won't hit the upright as it swings. Well, 
now I'm ready to drill the holes for the pipe from which the whole swing hangs from. This is actually just galvanized electrical conduit. I'm going to use this scrap piece to lay out the location of the hole I need to drill. Just slip it through the eye bolt, letting it rest on the bottom, and then just by eye, line it up. I'm really just trying to make it parallel to that 2x4. Okay, now to drill the hole, I'm just using a 15 16 inch speed bit. I just want to carefully drill it through. Okay. Now I only need to drill one hole all the way through, and that's just to slip the conduit in. On the other end, I need to drill the hole only deep enough to hold it. Now you might have noticed that the cross brace covers part of the hole for the conduit. That's actually deliberate because it'll help hold it in place later. But it does mean I have to unbolt the brace and lift it out of the way. Now the conduit just gets slipped through the hole I drilled and through the eye bolt. And then one of the hanging sections goes on. And the other one. And I just slip it through the other eye bolt and give it a little tap to drive it home. Okay. Now with the other conduit set in place, I can re-secure the cross brace. Okay. It's coming along now. Now let's install the platform. Well, let me show you the sequence. First, there's a piece of half-inch conduit. Then, on each end, a washer that I flatten one side out on so that it can be tight against the eye bolt. Now, a little spacer of three-quarter inch conduit on each end, and another washer. And I've had to just nip a little bit out of it so it'll clear the bolts that are actually on the seat frame. Just lift the whole thing up and slip it into the holes that I drilled earlier. Now, what actually holds this all together are the slats that I'm going to put on later. Okay, now this spacer that I just toenailed in is simply there to keep these hangers from moving in. Now let's put on the armrest. Okay, that takes care of that. Now, I guess I'm going to have to disassemble part of it, take off these cross braces, drop these seats off, otherwise I won't be able to get it out of the shop. Bring it up to the garden, set it up, and take it for a test spin. Okay. Now that it's all assembled, it's a good idea to put a couple drops of oil in all those pivot points once in a while. Let's test it out. Sam seems to like it. All right, that's nice.